Do you see this? Look at that. Nooks and crannies. Tara has requested gluten-free English muffins, so let's make some. There's no eggs in here, and you don't need any English muffin rings. I'm Jamie with Savory Saver. I share gluten-free recipes, tips, tricks, and resources to make your gluten-free lifestyle easier. So please consider hitting subscribe, and let's get started. A while back, I actually had another gluten-free English muffin video. It was actually made in the microwave, and it was okay. It wasn't my favorite, but it was okay for a quick fix, and it only made one, which was nice. I haven't made English muffins as a batch yet because, honestly, I don't have English muffin rings. So, one of the first things about this recipe that I like is those are not required. Another good thing about this recipe, there's no egg in it. So if you are egg free, this is for you. The third thing is this is a recipe from theloopywisk.com and I have raved about her recipe so far that I've done. So we're gonna do another one. I actually filmed another video a few days ago that it may or may not be out yet, but it was actually for gluten-free Hala. And I'm not gonna lie, I had a little bit of trouble with that one, but it's definitely a video to watch because at the end, it was still a learning experience and actually even with my mistakes, it came out pretty good. So check out that video or watch for that video to come out. So these gluten-free English muffins are very similar direction-wise to her other videos. So I really like Kat's directions and I like how easy her ingredients are to find. I don't have any trouble finding her ingredients because she uses individual flours, but it's nothing you can't find either in your grocery store or easily online. I will link below to any ingredients that you may not be able to find locally to you. I will also list all the ingredients by weight and volume, and the link will be in the description below as well to the full recipe. So if you want to check out her site and print that recipe out to try. I think those are all the recipe notes I can think of at this point. So let's try to make these and see how they come out. So to start our recipe, we need to bloom some psyllium husk powder in some lukewarm water. So I have this water at about 105 to 110 degrees, and I'm going to add 17 grams of psyllium husk powder into the water. That's a cup and a half of water or 360 grams with 17 grams of psyllium husk. Let's give it a whisk. This of course is our binder for the bread or for the English muffins rather. And then this is gonna sit for about 30 to 45 seconds to form a gel. And while that happens, we'll get some other ingredients ready. I am gonna be using the stand mixture for this recipe with the dough hook attachment. You can do this by hand, but I just like the mixer because I wanna make sure it's mixed really well. I'll probably mix it for probably five or six minutes at least. So I want everything to mix well and I don't wanna stand there and hand mix it. So I am gonna use the mixer. She does say that you can do this by hand as well as her other bread recipes. So that's something to note if you don't have a stand mixer or don't wanna dig it out. So to the bowl of the stand mixer, I have 160 grams of tapioca starch or one and one third cups plus one tablespoon, 140 grams of millet flour, which is a cup and a half tablespoon. And I also have 120 grams of sorghum flour and that's about three fourths of a cup along with an additional three tablespoons. To that, I'm gonna add 25 grams or two tablespoons of regular granulated sugar, two and a half teaspoons or eight grams of instant yeast. I'm gonna give it a quick whisk here. Sorghum flour is a little lumpier, so give it a good whisk to break that up. Tapioca starch, of course, goes everywhere and is not lumpy. And then the millet flour is kinda in between. Now I'm gonna add my salt. This is eight grams of table salt or one and a half teaspoons. Give it another whisk. All right, I'm gonna put this on the mixer and let's get the rest of our wet ingredients together. All right, as you can see, it's kind of moving around. It's all gelled up. So to the psyllium gel, we're gonna add 120 grams or a half cup of lukewarm whole milk. So again, 105 to 110 degrees. I'm also gonna add 20 grams of a neutral oil. Kat suggests sunflower. I am using canola oil. That's what I have in the house. You could also use vegetable oil. You just want something that doesn't have any taste to it. 
So 20 grams of that or a tablespoon and a half. We're also gonna add 10 grams or two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar. Now I wanna mix it well to combine. And I planned ahead a little bit. I actually used my big measuring cup because sometimes I like to grab the wrong size. Okay, so that's what it looks like all mixed together. I will say it looks like the milk is slightly curdled for some reason. I don't know why that is. It's a brand new gallon. I just opened it. So with all the ingredients in here and the psyllium husk and the oil, I don't think there's any problem with it because the milk isn't bad. I think it's just the way it looks. So I'm not going to be concerned about that. So now I've got a well in the center of my dry ingredients. I'm going to add all of the wet. My dough hook is on. I'm going to lower it. I'm going to turn it on just to stir, just because I don't want all those dry ingredients to fly up all over the place. Once everything's pretty well combined, I'll bump it up to medium. And Kat doesn't say how long to mix this. She says that the final dough should be smooth and supple. I'll probably blend it for about five minutes because I want to make sure everything is combined. I'll also stop at least once about halfway through and make sure that all the dry ingredients have been brought up from the bottom of this bowl because we want to make sure everything gets absorbed properly. So I'm going to turn this on. I'll show you what it looks like at the end of the mixing cycle and I'm going to get a couple things ready while this is mixing. So it's been five minutes, so the dough is pretty smooth. And one of the things that Kat says is that her recipes usually say the dough is smooth and supple. And if you're thinking smooth and supple, like it's going to be one cohesive dough and it's going to be a dough ball, this is still gluten-free and I have not had that result with her recipes. However, it does come together when I use the scraper. So let me push this to the side. All right, here's the dough. And as you can see, when I lift, it does pretty much stay together. So smooth and supple, I always take that it should not be tacky. It is going to be a little sticky, but not as sticky as lots of the other gluten-free doughs I have dealt with. So I'm okay with this. Now I'm getting ready to shape the English muffins. So I've got a large cookie sheet that I have coated with cornmeal because of course you can't have those English muffins without the cornmeal on the crusty side of it. So I've got a large pan for that. We're making eight, so this pan will be plenty big for that. I have my silicon mat here and I've covered it lightly with just some extra sorghum flour to help that dough from sticking. I'm gonna turn our dough out onto the board See, it's all one mass. So it's a little sticky, but when you can get it out all in one piece like that, it's always a good thing. Pretty much a clean bowl. Next, I need to give this a gentle knead and get it into the shape of a ball. So I'm gonna take a little more sorghum flour and put it on my hands just to dry them out a little bit more. You don't want too much because we don't want it incorporated in the dough, but hopefully it won't stick much. I also have my bench scrape if I need it and I'm going to use this to cut the portion sizes. So let's see how sticky it is. Look at that. Pulls over, no problems. Literally no editing. Look at that. Just a minute is all it took, not even 30 seconds. So let's get this shaped. I do have my scale. You want each dough ball to be about 125 grams, and I am going to weigh it because I'm gonna get more accurate results that way as far as cook time and rise time. So I'm not usually good at this, but let's just try to divide it into eight and see how close I am. So far, just minimal sticking. So there's two. Four. Okay, there's eight. I'm sure I'm probably not even, but we're going to try it. 129 on the first one. Not too bad. Now I'll just keep weighing them out. Okay, everything's been weighed out. I do have one guy back here that's a little small, but I'll probably do that as a sample. 
Now we need to roll these into balls and get them over to the cornmeal cookie sheet. So I'm gonna wash my hands and dry them really well and then put a little more flour on them. I think that's gonna give me a smoother ball as I roll it. Got floured hands and I did put the slightest amount of sorghum flour over the tops of these. I don't wanna add any more flour, but just a sprinkling to hopefully help a little bit with the roll. So you wanna take your hand, cup it over the dough ball and then roll it around in a circle. You want it smooth, and that's pretty good right there. So let's move it over to the cornmeal sheet. Let's get the rest rolled, and then we'll get them shaped. Okay, everything's enrolled. I have three on either side, and then I've got these two in the middle offset because they're gonna rise, and I wanna give them some room. So this one is a little wonky. It doesn't quite have the smoothness that the others have, and I thought about re-rolling it but it was after I put it on the cornmeal and I don't want that cornmeal incorporated into the English muffin. So I'm not gonna do that. So now let's press these down so they're flat. You want them to be about an inch and a fourth or three centimeters. So just gently press each one down. I did put a little bit of flour on my hands, but they are not sticking guys. So one more thing to do before we put them to the side to rise. We need to put some cornmeal over the top, just like we did the bottom. Cat does not say how much, so I would just sprinkle it so you can see it. And if you go high, like I am here, I'm probably six to eight inches from the actual English muffins, you'll get better coverage. Okay, let's get these ready to rise. I am going to proof them in the oven. I set my oven at 170 degrees, and that's because that's the lowest my oven will go. Turned it on for about a minute to a minute and a half, and then turned it off and I did that before I started filming. So now these have a place to rise that's draft free and a little bit warmer than the inside of my house. So I'm gonna cover them with plastic wrap. You just wanna do this lightly, we're not wrapping it tight. That's gonna keep them from drying out. All right, so they're lightly covered. I don't anticipate any sticking. Usually her recipes do not stick and the cornmeal is gonna help with that too. So I don't anticipate them sticking. I have it loosely covered so they can rise. Kat says they should double in size in about an hour. Since I'm using the oven, I am going to probably check them in about 30 minutes because I don't want them to overproof. After they're doubled in size, we're gonna, have, we're gonna go ahead and cook them. And we're actually doing these stove top in a cast iron skillet. I'm gonna try to get four at a time into the cast iron skillet when we cook them. So you wanna get this ready and we don't have to do much other than preheat it and it won't take that long. So I've got this ready to go. I'm gonna put these in the oven to proof and then we'll cook them off and see how they come out. It's only been about 25 minutes and I'd say these are ready before they overproof on me. So I have got the cast iron skillet preheating a little bit because we want it hot when it goes, when these hit the pan. However, Kat says we're cooking them over low heat. So once I can feel the heat, holding my hand over the pan for you know an inch a few inches then it'll be ready to go we don't want to overcrowd the pan so i'm definitely going to be gentle and only put like three or four in each pan these are going to take a while they're going to take 11 to 12 minutes per side so let's move you guys over to the stove and we'll go through that process Okay, so my pan's been preheating for probably about five minutes because you want to feel be able to feel the heat when your hand's up over it. I'm going to see how many I can get in here. It's probably going to be three, I'm guessing, maybe even two. So I've got my English muffins off camera. I've got the fish spatula, and I'm going to just gently put one on there and put it into the pan. This is ungreased, and we're going to cook them uncovered. Okay, so I just gently lifted it up and put it on here. I know you guys didn't see it on camera, but it really did all go on there without any issues. So I'm just going to lower it into the pan. All right, let's get a couple more on here. Okay, I've got three English muffins on here. We're going to cook these over low heat for 11 to 12 minutes. At that point, we will flip them and cook them for an additional 11 to 12 minutes. You want them to cook all the way through, of course. So these are low and slow, so it's not a whole lot of watching, but we are gonna have to do a little more work than if we just threw them in the oven. 
I've got three more on my cookie sheet that I actually may pop in the fridge because I don't want them to rise anymore and I'm hoping that slows it down. So I will probably take them back out after the first 10 minutes or so to start warming back up, but I, I don't want them to overproof. So I think I'm gonna do that even though the directions don't say so because I'm out of cooking space. So let's cook these for the first 11 minutes and we'll see what they look like. So this is the other pan I have going and I was only able to get two in there because it's a little deeper, but they've been cooking for the first 11 minutes and they're drier on the top now. And then if we flip them, we actually have that nice golden English muffin color, which I love. So I'm gonna flip this one too. That one's a little dark, but I think we'll be okay. Keep everything on low. I'm gonna cook these for another 10 minutes, 11 minutes if I think it needs it. I'll keep an eye on the smaller pan over here and we're gonna cook them until they're done. So I'll show you whichever one's done first and then we'll let them cool. So it's been another 11 to 12 minutes and I have to say, these look like regular English muffins that came from the store that have a ton of gluten in them. So I am hopeful and excited that they come out normal or should I say like a regular English muffin. So these are done. I've actually swapped burners. I'm having a little bit of issues with the other burner for some reason. I think it's actually cooking hotter. So I swapped burners so this could cook a little cooler and the other ones will cook a little faster. The other thing I had is, I will show you in just a minute, I bumped one with my spatula and it deflated just a little bit. So you need to be gentle with these. But these two I think are good. So I'm gonna move them over to the cooling grid and Kat says if you cut into them now, they will be sticky. So she recommends cooling them completely and that means for at least an hour. So I'm gonna move these over so they can start cooling and I'm gonna slide you guys over to the other burner so I can show you what I did to the other ones. Okay, so if you see this one, I bumped it a little bit with the edge of my spatula and it broke up a little bit. So I don't think that's gonna be a huge problem, but just to show you guys that this is gonna take a little bit of gentleness on your part if you make the recipe. The other thing, is that these are a little big for English muffins. I think you could probably cut them down just a little bit, maybe to 115, 120 grams, and get them a little more standard size. But on the other hand of that, that's gonna fit a sausage patty. If you're doing a sausage, egg and cheese muffin, or you know, it's gonna hold the bacon well. So I think that is all gonna be a preference thing on your part. Let me get the rest of these baked off let them cool and we're gonna get the fork, split it open and try it out. Okay, our English muffins have cooled. It's been at least an hour. I did fork split one and I did not film that, but I will say I just took the fork, I went around and it broke apart like a traditional English muffin with gluten. So I am super excited. They cooked really well for a first attempt little dark that's my cast iron pan i'm sure and it's also an electric burner so the heat's a little uneven so the cast iron helps with that but not completely that one which is the little one i had at the end that's more of a store size one i think actually but it's a little dark first attempt not worried about it you'll learn your stove and your pan and how it's going to work but they all did cook for about the 22 minutes that's a long cook time and you do have to watch them a little closely, but I don't think I've ever seen a gluten-free English muffin that Tara has brought home from the store that looked as close to a traditional English muffin as these. So I'm gonna give it a try. There are the nooks and crannies again. Not gonna put any butter on it. And I am gonna try the darker side because I think Tara will appreciate the lighter side when she gets home. So let's try it. It does feel the slightest bit sticky still, and I shouldn't even say sticky. It's a little damp. So it could just be that it's still not completely cool. I wouldn't say it's sticky, um, but I think that's an adjustment thing on my part. I'm not upset with this because most likely these are gonna be toasted. You don't usually eat English muffins cold. So I think that's gonna take care of that. Listen. And hear that crust. That's good. 
It tastes like a regular English muffin that you would get at the store that had gluten in it. Okay, taste and texture could not be any better for these. They are again, a little damp, and you can see where I press my finger into it. That is a cooking time and a temperature thing, I'm sure. So that's on me for a first time make. Um, you wanna do, you wanna cook these really slow and low because you wanna have the dough time to cook all the way through. So that 11 minutes or so is critical on both sides to make sure you're heating it from both sides and it's getting cooked all the way through. You do not want to cover these when you cook them. Kat specifically says that in the directions. You're just supposed to cook them. Kat says these are best on day of, of course, like most gluten-free things are. She also says though you can wrap them tightly and try to store them for two to three days at room temperature but that you should really toast them at that point, which it's an English muffin again. I don't remember not ever toasting an English muffin. Tara and I will probably freeze these. That's our standard practice for most gluten-free breads at day one even. There's lots of times if I make bread during the day and I test it for you guys, she comes home, she tries it, and unless she knows she's eating it the next day, everything gets wrapped up and popped in the freezer. In regards to anything on the recipe itself, guys, it was really easy. Like I didn't have many problems with this. The dough wasn't super sticky and I worked with it pretty well. The cooking process wasn't hard. I was just unfamiliar with it. So it took a little bit of effort on my part, but for a first time, I don't think this is anything that you guys can't do. I This beats any English muffin gluten-free that I've seen Tara come home with. It tastes like a real English muffin and not like the one she normally gets. The English muffins she usually gets, honestly, are Trader Joe's, and they're pretty pale. They're almost white, and they don't darken much. She's had Udi's before. I think they have an English muffin, or someone else has an English muffin. She's had a couple before that are okay. This tastes like a regular English muffin. I highly recommend making this recipe if you like English muffins and want a gluten-free version. In regards to anything else on this recipe, guys, down in the description below, you can find a list of the ingredients. I will link to any kind of ingredient that you might have trouble finding. Sometimes the gluten-free flours are in grocery stores and sometimes they're just hard to find. So I will link down below to online options for that. Directions are easy to follow. Taste and texture are good. Highly recommend this. Guys, are you gonna make these? Are you gonna think about making these? I probably could just stick with this recipe. I don't know if I need to find another gluten-free English re muffin recipe. In regards to this video, that's all I have for today, guys. I want to thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing, and I've got the rest of this English muffin to eat, so I hope to see you in the next video.